Welcome to our project. As a group, we've noticed something common about most Colby students, and that is we tend to leave our items unattended in public spaces on campus. We want to have a better understanding of why Colby students leave their personal belongings without any supervision, the underlying reasons why we do so, and why we do not when we're in off-campus spaces such as coffee houses. For this project, we want to see how people would react if we were to take someone's belongings. Stealing is an act of deviance, and it isn't something that we experience on a daily basis as campus residents. Colby College students expect no one to steal their belongings, and it appears to be an unspoken campus agreement, but why is that? Through our experiments and interviews, we dove into this concept and tried to figure out what was really behind this phenomenon. We hypothesized that some of this could be due to the largely affluent population at Colby. The mentality of everyone already has everything, so why would they need to steal? As we saw in these charts in class, a majority of students at Colby are from families in the self-proclaimed middle and upper social class, with the numbers of average family incomes being far higher than those of the rest of the U.S. We believe that many hold the opinion that majority of students either view their valuable items as expendable or th that they too are aware that the student body is relatively affluent and therefore assume that no one would need to steal. That being said, let's begin with our experiments. We conducted breaching experiments in public locations around campus where students often leave their belongings unattended such as in Miller Library first floor and the spa. The overall purpose of these experiments was to observe whether students will react if a stranger steals unattended objects that clearly belong to someone else. We had one of our group members leave their belongings out on a table unattended. After some time had passed, another group member walked up to the table and took them. We filmed this experiment and observed whether anyone in the surrounding vicinity reacted to the scenario. If anyone came forward to address the thief, we would immediately step in, explain the nature of the experiment and project, and ask if they were willing to be interviewed. There were three types of experiments we originally wanted to conduct. The first was a control to demonstrate the phenomenon of students being comfortable with leaving their belongings unattended. One of our group members left a laptop and backpack unattended in Miller Library for a period of time and observed for around an hour at a distance to see if the stuff was disturbed. The second breaching experiment involved a group member leaving a laptop in the spa and a group member came forward after around 15 minutes to take the laptop. The third breaching experiment would have involved a, a group member leaving a notebook and or binder in either Miller Library or the spa and another group member would have come forward after around 15 minutes to take the notebook or binder. We wanted to test different variables that might elicit different reactions, such as the material value of belongings that are stolen, such as laptops and phones versus notebooks and binders. After we did the experiments, we interviewed bystanders and those that intervened and asked them questions based off what their reaction was. For example, if they did not do anything, we asked them why they didn't do anything. The act that we committed is an example of formal deviance, as it impedes on formal sanctions against stealing and would normally warrant some form of disciplinary action if caught. Lastly, before we begin with the rest of the video, we would like to say that everyone who is on camera and or has had their voice recorded gave in fully informed consent. Anyone who requested that they not be filmed was cut out due to privacy and ethical considerations. Let's begin with the first experiment. Considering it would be tedious to show an hour worth of sitting and waiting, we can skip to the main points. We left a backpack along with a computer and folder out in the library for over an hour. Fast forward one hour and the items were still there, untouched and unnoticed. This gave us a good control scenario as well as proved the security of Colby's campus environment. There might not be many thieves roaming around the Colby campus, but would anyone notice if there were? To test this, we moved to our second experiment. The next video and accompanying interview were taken at the spa and depict our group member stealing a computer off the table where another group member was just working. Just like, did you notice that I was like that I was someone different, or did you just not notice yeah. at all what was happening? Like, I knew it was a boy sitting here, but like, I didn't pay much attention about it. I think like people are pretty friendly around this campus, and I haven't like witnessed any event of stealing so you just didn't like anticipate anyone stealing so it just didn't cross your mind that i would be stealing his stuff no okay that's fair so like you noticed i was taking it but that wasn't what came to mind was not that i was stealing i don't like to leave stuff behind that's right i don't either 
like even if I like know it's a pretty friendly campus,、uh, except in my room, I don't lock my door though. <laughs> Many people would like to leave their stuff behind, like they are, like they feel it's pretty safe. As you can see, the nearby students took little notice of this event happening. Even with an item as valuable as a computer, the level of perception of what could possibly be theft is low. This became more explicit in the interviews. This led us to cut short our experimentation process. Due to the lack of notice with even a high-value item such as a computer, we made the choice of not to run the experiment again with a pencil case and binder. In case we focused our efforts on short interviews, in order to gauge the opinion of students unrelated to the experiment all around campus. These next interviews provided us with much more information. Yeah, I usually work in the library because I don't like sitting by myself and doing work. So yes. Um, occasionally, if I go to dinner or something. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people will leave their stuff when they go to do like a like go to the spa or go to get dinner or something. And yes, I do do that. So I wouldn't do it for more than like an hour, probably. Um, I'll put like. I always put my AirPods or phone charger or phone away if I'm not bringing it with me. The only thing that I'm really leaving out usually is my laptop and my pencil case. No, yeah, maybe my laptop and my pencil case because I'll turn my laptop off and close it, and so there's no accessing it. I have not seen that. No. Yes, because I feel like a lot of the people here at Colby already have all of the things that I have, so they don't really have a need to take it. I do. I lose them unattended, but I also check to see if there's a lot of people.、Mm -hmm. If there's like a lot, like at the spa, right? Wouldn't. But at the libraries, I would leave them unattended. Right. I, I mean, I've seen backpacks being unattended, but I haven't seen like electronics unattended. Really? Yeah. Or maybe I don't pay attention. I guess,、yeah. but. You leave. Yeah, I hide my laptop. If I leave it out, I hide it. Comfortable leaving my stuff unattended on Colby campus than coffee shop, just because there are more strangers out there, and you don't know people. And、yeah. here it's kind of like a there's a like an honor code kind of. Yeah. And although people break it, the chances of of people breaking it is like. Less compared to you know a big yeah, population yeah. out there. Right, right.、Like、everyone's on their own. Everyone's for themselves. Looking at a couple more interviews, let's focus on the question of why Colby students feel comfortable leaving their items unattended. And why? Why is that? Why do you feel a little less comfortable leaving your stuff out in a public space off campus?、Mm, I think because at Colby, like since freshman year, when I talked to older students. Um, they always told me, "Oh, it's so safe here to just leave your stuff around," and that was like the general census, like on campus. Like if you if someone left the stuff on the table, it means it's taken. So then we just I kind of just walk away,、mm -hmm. and I feel like that's like the general census that everyone has on campus. So like I feel like it's safe to like just leave my stuff there. But in the coffee shop, like there's people I don't know who are not Colby students, so it's just like less. Trustworthy, I guess, and so it's more attuned to getting like stolen. 
Uh, why do you think Colby students feel comfortable leaving their things unattended? Um, I don't know. I feel like it's it's just a thing where, like, for example, when people lose their things, like, Colby, like, a lot of people will return them. They won't steal them. So I feel like our community is just trustworthy in that way. And there's no reason for us to be stealing anything. We pulled several results from these experiments and interviews. Primarily, because in the first experiment, the backpack and laptop were left completely alone for that duration of time, we were able to show that, at least in the library and spa, Colby's campus is factually a safe place where students don't have the urge to steal, at least not at the magnitude of stealing a laptop. We as group members agreed that it feels like a safe place, but we wanted to find out why students feel that sense of security around their belongings and our experiments and interviews provided good data on this as well. Students use phrases like, everyone already has what I have, and there's no reason for Colby students to steal anything, along with mentioning the level of wealth at our institution. Because of this, we feel as though many students generalize the population of Colby to be wealthy, assuming that those who steal do so out of financial necessity, and therefore Colby students would have no reason to take another's belongings. The second element of our conclusion entails what was talked about as an unspoken law or honor code. This has a lot to do with the relative homogeneity of Colby students and their upbringing or socialization. It was also discussed how items were left behind to save seats. The student body of Colby was selected for their academics along with their personal traits and integrity. From our conversations, it seems evident that students factor this into said honor code when assessing the safety of their surroundings and, in turn, whether they choose to leave their belongings unattended. Students noticed, who noticed the laptop being stolen were so confident in the informal sanctions that are created through a campus focused around trust and security that they simply turned a blind eye assuming that our so-called thief was not a real threat. In short, we found two conclusions. The first is that students generalize the wealth of other students and therefore assess the risk of stealing to be much lower on campus than anywhere else. The second conclusion is that students assume other students are honest and trustworthy simply by their attendance at Colby and create a set of, a set of informal sanctions that show that stealing people's belongings is outside of the norms of Colby and is shunned. We hope you found our project interesting and thank you for watching our video.